Climate change is a natural process. For the last 30 years, the planet once again is going through a process of climate change. But this time, human activity and lifestyle are causing an acceleration of the process. Big industries, large-scale agriculture, the great cities, deforestation, among other human activities, are causing the general temperature of the planet to rise. This process is called global warming. Global warming is accelerating the natural process of climate change. The consequences and drastic changes in the climate are already being felt around the world. For some, the changes in the climate can be favorable, and for others, the consequences can be life-threatening. One of the most notorious effects of climate change is the disappearance of the world's glaciers. Ninety-five percent of the world's tropical glaciers can be found in the Andean community. Seventy-one percent of those are situated in Peru. And almost 25 percent of these glaciers have already disappeared. The Pastoruri, for example, in Ancash, once famous for its snow cap, has now almost disappeared. As a consequence, the changes in the availability of water can already be felt in Peru today. According to Teresa Ore, president of Iproga, the problem is that the Peruvian snowcaps are melting at a much faster speed than they used to. This is evident. The most objective fact about climate change is the melting of the ice caps. In Peru, important snowcaps have disappeared in less than a decade. This puts Peru in a particular situation because it is very rich, very diverse, but the problem of the water is very extensive. According to Francisco Soto, executive director of Iproga, all the water of the sea cannot be used for human beings. Only 1% of the world's fresh water is accessible to human beings. That's why the importance of the glaciers. The Peruvian glaciers represent 5% of the fresh water of the world. And that's why it is important not to lose them. On top of this, 90% of the Peruvian population lives on the coast in arid areas, where only 1.7% of the total amount of water in Peru is available. For the moment, there is still water as the snow caps are melting, but they will soon disappear, and the problems of access to water will only get worse. Not only are the people on the coast already affected by the water shortages, but a great part of the Peruvian population lives off agriculture, and Water is one of the most important resources without which their plants, animals and themselves cannot live. So now that we are starting to realize that there will be no turning back, now that we are faced with these tremendous problems and challenges, what can we do? According to Teresa Ore, there are many things we can do, such like develop national politics in order to protect the national resources. No one talks about that. Protecting the water is part of the security that the government should give the population. We talk a lot about the necessity to increase production, to increase production, to increase production, but no one talks about the protection of the water basins. It is necessary to give the children environmental education in order for them to value the water. Comprehensive plans to manage the water basins with retributions for environmental services. There are many things that can be done right now. According to Juan Torres of Practical Actions, climate change will be differentiated. There will be areas where the droughts will increase and others where the rains will be more prominent. Some areas will be colder and others will warm up. The tendencies will not be the same everywhere. That's why it is important to develop possible scenarios. Because if one concept will accompany us during this time, it is the concept of uncertainty. 
there is a macro component which has to do with the global warming, the northern hemisphere and industrial activity. But there is also another part of the bill that can be related to deforestation, excess of herding, alteration of water cycles, and this is also part of climate change. There are two complementary ways to deal with the situation. On the one hand, the technological way, which has to do with technologies to optimize the capturing and the keeping of the water, optimizing the water use. These technologies have to do with the artificial infrastructure. But we also need to develop technologies to conserve the natural infrastructure. We always look at the existing reservoirs, basins and canals, but we have not paid the same attention to the forests, the soil, the natural water capturers. The soil captures the water. It is necessary to dedicate efforts to the conservation of the natural infrastructure as well as the artificial infrastructure. We need to be prepared with crops appropriate for the excess of water and the lack of water, animals for the excess of water and the lack of water. That is why it will be important to elaborate different scenarios to prepare for the consequences of climate change. <laughs>